Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk a little bit about what is the perfect low histamine diet and the answer is it depends. There is no perfect low histamine diet but there may be a perfect diet for you. Now um, my understanding of histamine and my research into the low histamine lists that are available have shown me that everybody's different. Every client is different. Every person is different. So no list, no low histamine diet is perfect. Uh, all the lists out there are guides. They're guides that you can use to work out what works for your body. Now, my belief is that all food is good, healthy and nourishing for us. It's just that some of us are reacting to certain foods. And when it comes to a histamine diet, there's a general list of high histamine foods that are completely agreed to by everybody. Fermented foods, uh, things like alcohol, vinegar, uh, anything that is fermented like sauerkraut, kombucha, stuff like that. A few vegetables like eggplants and spinach. Tomatoes are a big one um, that I know a lot of us miss. And those things are all agreed upon. But when it comes to the finer details of the diet, you get a lot of disagreement. And I believe a lot of this disagreement is because most lists are written from the point of a person's experience, either a single person or a group of people who've been surveyed. So, you know, for example, there are multiple different lists out there. One that's really well recognized is the Swiss list, the SIGI list. And this list is actually based on surveys and experiential information. So a, a little bit of the information is based on lab testing of histamine in foods, but funding for lab testing for histamine intolerance is basically zero. So we don't have a lot of great lab tested results of what levels of histamine are in food. Also, different foods can have different levels of histamine in them depending on where they were grown, how ripe they are, how they've been stored, how old it is, because histamine is produced as a part of ripening and degradation of foods. So a meal that you eat on Monday if left over in the fridge to Tuesday, is much higher in histamine. So it's very difficult to pr provide a list with exactly what you should and shouldn't eat. A lot of people send me messages or comments saying, am I allowed to eat this? Is it safe? Well, yes, you're allowed to eat anything you want. And yes, all foods are safe. But for you right now, is it appropriate? And that's the thing that we need to look at. Language around food is another thing I want to talk about at another time. For example, if we look a bit more into the detail of the list, Janice Jonija is a well-known Canadian dietitian who was one of the first people who wrote about histamine intolerance. Her list is very short, the avoid part of it. She doesn't avoid gluten or dairy. She says that pretty much all spices are tolerated in moderation, and that's based on her research into the science and experience with her clients. If you look at the Swiss Intolerance Guide list, the city list, this list has a huge list of foods on it that are rated from zero, one, two, and three, based on compatibility. Now, if you look into the detail when you read the list, a lot of things are noted with a 2 for compatibility, but they don't have a big H next to them for high histamine. They often also have question marks against them. Looking, for example, at buckwheat, which was something I was asked about this week. Buckwheat is not high in histamine, but on the city list, it's rated as a 2 for compatibility. That can be because of self-experience surveys that have been given to them with information from 
clients or patients who have had issues. These issues may not be from histamine intolerance. They could be from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO, where a patient is having issues with grains and fibrous foods. Or they can be from oxalates, which are another type of food intolerance. And buckwheat is very high in oxalate. So as you can see, a lot of the lists, this, the low histamine, high histamine lists, are actually altered by what else might have been going on in the patient population that have helped to create this list. It may well be that a lot of the things that are in there as a void are actually not high in histamine, but may well be part of another type of food intolerance. So why does this happen? Well, I've talked previously about mast cell activation. Mast cell activation can be as complicated as having the full mast cell activation syndrome and having very little tolerance to food or it can be very very small and you could just be having a small amount of mast cell activation that goes alongside the histamine intolerance and hasn't turned into mast cell activation syndrome and this along with leaky gut can cause other types of food intolerances and then of course you can have SIBO or other types of gut issues underlying which can cause other types of food intolerances as well. You can have fructose malabsorption, you can have lactose intolerance. There are a lot of things that can be going on in a picture. So when you read a list, be objective. When you read a list, think critically. Compare lists. I've got a list, it's the low histamine list, happy without histamine. And that includes a long list of foods you can eat. It includes a big list of foods to test. And these are all these controversial foods that a lot of people say they can't eat and some people say they can. And then a list of the, we absolutely know that these are high in histamine. Definitely these are the ones to avoid. That's made laid out so it's easier for you to take it and run with it and not just have a big list of, oh my God, I can't eat this. And then you walk around and you can't see anything you can eat. You actually can look at, okay, there's a big long list of foods I can eat, let's start there. So keep in mind when you're looking at all of the lists, they are a guide. They are only a guide. If you're looking at a lot of them and you're getting confused, then go and see a practitioner. You might find that there's something else going on. You might need to work on gut healing. You might need to work on your stress levels. The nervous system has a big, impact on histamine intolerance and all food sensitivity so please take all this with a grain of literal salt and just test it for yourself and if somebody else in a group is saying don't eat this i can't eat this remember n equals one they can't eat it but you may be able to focus on eating as much variety as you can and in as many colors as you can. Eat as big a rainbow of vegetables and fruit as you're able to. So I hope that helps and takes away some of that mystery of what is a perfect histamine diet, because there isn't one. The perfect diet is the diet that's right for you, that your symptoms reduce, you feel comfortable with life, and you are then ready to start healing your root causes. If you need any more help, you can go to my website, Happy Without Histamine, free recipes there, free list, and also lots of other resources, and you can come and send me one-to-one. -one. Bye.